Hi, uh, welcome to our lecture on monetary policy. As you may remember, we talked recently about uh, banking and bank money creation. Uh, and we mentioned that only M0 money aggregate can be actually directly controlled by the central bank. In other words, uh, the central bank may control the amount of cash in the economy but obviously other money aggregates that are created on the basis of this uh, cash can only be indirectly influenced by the central bank. So we mentioned that the supply of money uh, depends partly on central bank policy and also on the percentage of loans taken in cash and demand for loans from the customers of banks. And now the question is, uh, can those two factors that we mentioned here, the percentage of loans and demand for loans, can they be somehow dependent on uh, some elements of central, central bank um, policy, which we will call monetary policy? Okay, so what is monetary policy about? We could define monetary policy as a kind of policy that is supposed to shape the supply of money. So, uh, in other words, you could say this is manipulating the supply of money in the economy to achieve some economic goals. This monetary policy is usually discussed uh, in the context of fighting inflation, uh, even though that if we use this monetary policy, we can also influence GDP growth and unemployment. Especially if we fight inflation, we create some uh, conditions for GDP growth slowdown and higher unemployment. But uh, the idea is usually fiscal policy is more attributed to fighting unemployment, which can obviously influence inflation, as you, as you already know. And monetary policy is perceived as mostly suitable for fighting inflation. There are two types of monetary policy, expansionary monetary policy and contractionary monetary policy, uh, which probably seems to you quite similar to fiscal policy. And that's correct. I mean, expansionary monetary policy, the so-called easy money policy, is aimed at promoting economic growth at the risk of having higher inflation. And contractionary monetary policy is aimed at fighting inflation at the risk of increasing unemployment. Remember also that banks or the whole banking system is very important when it comes to monetary policy. Most of monetary policy tools would influence the banking activities. So uh, monetary policy will impact, first of all, it would impact banks, banking system, and through this banking system, some impact would be exerted on the whole society. So, uh, banking system can be a kind of can be perceived as kind of a link between uh, the central bank and its policy and the whole society and the economy as such. What is to be controlled? You know, on one hand, we tend to define a monetary policy as a kind of policy of manipulating money supply. So uh, we would uh, tend to say that central banks through monetary policy are focused mostly on controlling money supply. On the other hand, we often hear about interest rate changes uh, as a kind of a way of handling monetary policy. So uh, is monetary policy more about money supply or more about interest rate? Uh, this is the wrong question. I mean, uh, you cannot control one without another. Uh, so, if you want to change um, money supply, then that would probably influence 
interest rates. If you want to change interest rates, then usually changes in money supply are inevitable, just like it is presented in the, in the graph that you can see here. As we mentioned, uh, expansionary monetary policy is aimed at promoting economic growth, even though that it may result in higher levels of inflation. What tools uh, are used within expansionary monetary policy? Actually, regardless of the question whether this is contractionary or expansionary monetary policy, tools are the same required reserve ratio, interest rates, and open market operations. Uh, in expansionary monetary policy, we will see the following use of those tools. The required reserve ratio, if it is used, it would be decreased. For interest rates, if they are used, they would be decreased. For open market operations, bonds would be bought from commercial banks. What kind of results that would bring? If we decrease the required reserve ratio, then we increase money multiplier. So we allow banking system to create more money and therefore we allow banking system to create money supply, additional money supply. Uh, this decreased required reserve ratio will result in a bigger money multiplier because this multiplier in the simple money crea creation is one over the required uh, reserve ratio. We rarely use this instrument because as we already mentioned it does not allow for any fine tuning. The changes here are pretty violent, uh, kind of dramatic you could say interest rates down. What kind of consequences would it have? Well, we make money cheaper for banks. If we make money cheaper for banks, then banks usually respond lowering their interest rates. If they lower interest rates, then people and businesses perceive taking a loan as cheaper. Hence, the demand for loans would increase. And you remember that if the demand for loans is bigger, then banks can create more bank money. So, a lower interest rate would increase the supply of money. Uh, the other, uh, the last one, the last uh, tool would be open market operations. And then we've got uh, the central bank entering the market and buying bonds from commercial banks. Buying bonds from commercial banks means bonds would go to the central bank and money payment for those bonds would go to commercial banks. So they have more money and the liquidity of banking system is bigger and more money can be created. As you can see, all three tools used here are aimed at increasing money supply and decreasing interest rates and this is what expansionary monetary policy is about. Contractionary monetary policy that is aimed at fighting inflation uses the same tools but in the quite opposite way. So the required reserve ratio would be increased if it is used. If the central bank decides to use interest rates that would they would be increased as well. And open market operations, if they are performed by uh, the central bank, would be based on uh, selling bonds to commercial banks. And in this way, the central bank will be able to attract money from the market. All those three tools may result in smaller economic growth and may even Re result in some higher unemployment. Why is that so? If the required reserve ratio goes up, then the money multiplier will be smaller, so the possibilities of the banking system to create more money would be limited. Higher interest rates, tool number two, higher interest rates would decrease demand for bank loans. 
they would make loans more expensive therefore less customers would like to take loans and hence less money will be created in the banking system and as i already mentioned in the framework of open market operations if the central bank keeps selling bonds to commercial banks money from those commercial banks will be paid to central banks and it disappears from circulation therefore we see money supply smaller all three tools used in contractionary monetary policy result in smaller money supply and higher interest rates this is what contractionary monetary policy is about what are the major problems associated with monetary policy uh, first of all remember monetary policy is pretty good at fighting inflation but not all types of inf inflation can be tackled with the use of monetary policy monetary policy is very good at fighting monetary inflation which is kind of obvious because monetary inflation is about having too much money in circulation too big supply of money so the correct monetary policy may adjust the money supply to the correct level that's easy monetary policy works well for demand pull inflation if there is too much demand in the economy then uh, contractionary monetary policy can lower aggregate demand in the economy so the reason for inflation can be eliminated hence inflation will go down uh, the problem uh, with monetary policy is that you cannot really use it against cost push inflation if there are some external supply shocks that uh, provoke increase in the general level of prices then monetary policy tools are not very effective in fighting this kind of inflation we have also the lag problems uh, and this is uh, the kind of problems that we already discussed in fiscal policy lecture so we've got implementation lags before we realize what the problem really is and before we uh, realize what kind of policy should be used and before we actually implement this policy well it all takes some time so that produces one lag then we've got impact lag and that means that it takes time for the policy shift to start working in the economy it is for instance estimated that it takes uh, about six months in Poland between the changes made by the central bank and the uh, real life uh, results of those changes uh, that can be observed six months between the change in the monetary policy and the effect in the real economy so those implementation lags imply that by the time the policy has the effect the intended effect the economic situation may be simply quite different from what it was uh, so the policy may not be appropriate anymore and this is like this uh, full under shower procedure than we discussed during our fiscal policy slide here you can see some real uh, life data so these are interest rates or central bank interest rates uh, in, in Poland I show you only last 10 years you, you can see the main uh, interest rate the so-called reference interest rate 10 years ago that was like 3.5 then climbing up to nearly 5% in May 2012 so that was increasing the interest rate because inflation was going up remember that was after the time when there was a lot of expansionary policy after the 2008 crisis so we were promoting economic growth in Poland and no wonder that inflation could grow but after that inflation was slowing down and you can see the decrease in this reference rate 
from 4.75 down down till 2014 when it hit 2% and 2015 March when it hit 1.5 and that is historically the lowest level was actually because with this whole COVID situation you can see that there were uh, violent changes here uh, over less than a month we decreased this interest rate from 1.5 to 0.5 and that makes some economies to worry a little bit about the situation isn't it too early you know uh, we lowered our interest rate to the level that is so close to zero then actually there is no space left for any other decrease in the interest rate some economists uh, suggest that the central bank in poland in the months to come may decide to lower this reference uh, interest rate to 0.05 percent that would be just symbolic actually symbolic interest rate and you can see here the inflation and the interest rate you can see clearly they are kind of related so when inflation grows then interest rates also grow like more contractionary uh, monetary policy is used when inflation goes down then interest rate is decreased as more expansionary uh, policy is used then you can see in 2014 the whole 2015 and 2016 we had even deflation in Poland so this inflation was negative and this is the first controversial thing because you can see that there was no response on the side of of the central bank so they decided to keep the interest rates unchanged even though this inflation was this inflation was negative so we had deflation in fact then we see in 2017 18 this inflation starts growing but the central bank another controversy didn't decide to uh, increase the interest rates and nowadays this inflation is between three and four percent so compare it with the graph here three or four percent is inflation in poland and the interest rate is 0.5 uh, so there raises some concerns whether this kind of policy would not result in high inflation in the future well time will show certainly there are some there are some um, uh, arguments for increasing or, or not increasing those interest rates right now this is open for for discussion uh, required reserve ratio practically not used certainly not used over this period of time that I show to you here open market operations yes certainly conducted it's not very easy to find the exact data on open market operations the central bank does not really want us to know everything about how they handle monetary policy how much of intervention then they make sometimes they announce it sometimes they don't okay that would be all for today so we finish this monetary policy and actually this is our last topic in our macroeconomics course uh, stay tuned i may publish one lecture more a kind of recapitulation to our course thank you very much for your attention bye